In order to take your measurements, you need two measurements. You need the measurement around your body, and you need the measurement from your waist to however long you want your skirt. So this is how you get your first measurement. On your body, you need to look at your body and see which is the widest part of your body. Is it going to be around your hips and booty, or is it going to be around your waist? So what you do, you take your measuring tape, and for most people, most people, the widest part is around your hips, which includes your butt. So you take your measuring tape, and you measure around your hips, going across the widest part, the most pokey outy part of your booty. So you need to get your measuring tape around the biggest part of your booty, pull it around, and figure and measure, see where you measure at. For your waist, you go put it around your waist where you think your natural waist is. Put it around your waist and then go side to side. And what this does, this tells your body or tells you where you bend at. And where you bend at is your natural waistline. And so then you would need to measure right there. See, my waist is really high up on my body because of changes in my body as I've gotten older. But, so this is where the measurement would, would I would take from here. So, for me, I would go around my hips, around the widest, widest part of my booty, and write that measurement down. And I'm not going to tell you what that measurement is, but I'm going to write it down, and that's the measurement I'm going to use to figure out how wide my skirt is going to be for a simple gathered skirt. Next, you need the measurement from where your skirt's going to sit on your waist to however long you want it. For me, going by my waist, which is usually about right there, and I have my skirts usually to my knee, and I figure it out, and that's usually about 25 inches, is good for me because it's below my knee and that's how long I like to wear my skirts. So just here on the side, where your waist is, remember wherever it is that you bend. So from that point, let your measuring, uh, your, you can use your measuring stick, or you can use your measuring tape and let it hang out your side here like that. And then just figure out where your knee is. 25 inches for me. It could be shorter for you. It could be above your knees. It could be super, super short if you want it super short. Or it could go all the way to the floor if you want a maxi. So you just, and those are the two measurements that you need. So write those down. The measurement around your body and the measurement from your waist to however long you want it. Okay, now that we've taken our measurements and we've written them down, I'm going to use my daughter's measurements to um, describe how we're going to go through this because I'm not going to tell you what my measurements are. Um, my daughter's body is, her waist is 22 inches around and her, her skirt length is 20 inches. She likes hers about 20 inches long. So in order to get the skirt to fit properly and be a gathered skirt, we're going to have to add more, more length and width to the fabric in order to fit properly. Now when you work with a gathered skirt, it's usually, the rule is one and a half to two times around your body. So I'm going to use it two times around hers. So her 22 inches times two is 44 inches. So that'll be how much is going to be gathered around her waist. Plus we're going to add one as a seam allowance. So each side of the fabric is going to be a half inch seam. So that gives us a width of 45 inches. So she'll need a 45 inch piece of fabric wide. Now the length of her fabric, she wanted the 20 inch length. So that's from her waist to uh, just below her knees is 20 inches for her. So we're going to add a one and a half inch hem, which means that we're going to fold the fabric up so that it'll be 20 inches long from her waist to the bottom of the fabric, but it's going to be one and a half inches as it gets folded up and hemmed down, which brings us to 21 and a half. And then we're going to add a two and a half inch casing for our elastic, which brings our total to 24 inches. So all total, she'll need a rectangle piece of fabric that's 45 inches wide and 24 inches long. And when we go into the casing and everything else, I'll explain all that as we get to that point. So remember, your width or around your body measurement times two plus one inch. That gives you a half inch seam allowance on each side. So it's a half inch on this side, half inch on this side. For your length is however long you want it plus one and a half inches at the bottom for your hem and two and a half inches for two and a half inches 
for a casing at the top. We're going to use elastic and make this an elastic gathered skirt so she can easily slip it on and off. Okay, so I have all my fabric cut out and what you see here is my daughter wants pockets added to her skirt. So I'm going to show you this real quick. This is how you add a patch pocket. So what I've done here, this is already ironed and ready to go, is I cut out a square as big as I thought would be decent. You know, something big enough to get her hand in, she can put her little doodads in here, her plastic dinosaurs. And I surged the edges so that it won't fray. And then I went back and I ironed everything. I ironed the top first because this is going to be the top of the pocket. And then I ironed the bottom and then I ironed the sides. So that when you lay all this on top of the fabric, you sew it on like a patch, which is why it's called a patch pocket. So you lay it on the fabric where you want it positioned at. And then when you sew, you're going to sew here, down this side, across the bottom, and up this side. And you do secure stitching right here. So you'll, you'll use your reverse and you'll go back and forth right here a couple of times and back and forth right here a couple of times. And this will be a pocket. So she'll be able to put her little plastic dinosaurs in there and she'll be good to go. And I'm going to do one on each side of the fabric. So once I get this sewn on, we'll come back and I'll show you how to put everything together. Okay, now that we're back, this is what I've done so far. So, I have, we sewed on the pockets, right here. We sewed on the pockets, and I went ahead and sewed the only seam that we have here in, in the back. So this is going to be the back seam. And, and you can tell right here, it's a half inch on each side. So that way you have a whole inch where that... Um, that amount that we had planned for. So that's the inch right there for your seam allowance. Now, what I did next was once I got the seam sewn right there, I went ahead and oh, I get situated here. At the top and at the bottom, I ironed my extra fabric. So this is an inch and a half. So this right here, that's a half inch. That's a half inch. You fold it and that's an inch. And we're going to sew right here along this edge and that's going to be the bottom of the skirt. That's going to be the hem. And we did the same thing at the top. Except we did a half inch here and then we folded it over for an inch. So this inch and the inch on this side would be your casing. So we're going to go ahead and sew a seam right along here all the way around the skirt. Except the difference is on the hem we're going to go all the way around. We're going to start here at this side. We're going to sew all the way around and we're going to end overlapping our first seam. On the casing, I like to start slightly off center. So I'm going to start sewing here, I'm going to sew all the way around, and I'm going to stop like two inches, an inch, maybe two inches from where I started. And we're going to have a gap here, and that's where we're going to put our elastic in. So I'm going to sew all this, and then we'll come back and put our elastic in. Okay, so I have sewn the hem and the casing all the way around. Now right here, you're going to see a teeny weeny little space here. This little space is where we are going to insert our elastic. Okay, I had to go grab the elastic. So what I did is I took the elastic for uh, Lorena. Her waist is 22 inches and I double checked to make sure that 
Yep, 22 inches is comfortable for her. Sometimes I double check. I wrap it around her waist and pull until she says, ow. Um, and then as long as it's comfortable around her waist, is that that's how I know that um, that's a good fit for her. So this piece of elastic is 22 inches long, and when I sew it, I'm going to sew it overlapped. So the ends are going to overlap for about an inch. But before we get that far, we got to put the elastic in the casing. So this is what we're going to do. Oh, before I get to do that, this is called non-roll elastic. So this elastic is a very stiff, very rigid elastic. It stretches around your body, but it doesn't roll very easily. It doesn't bend this way, which is what you want. Because there is some elastic out there that's like this. And this is actually buttonhole elastic because it has holes in it for buttons to be able to adjust in the waistband. But you see how thin this elastic is and how easily it turns and bends like that? You can get elastic like this and put it in your waistband, but then it'll fold up. It'll fold like this in your waistband, and then you'll have twists all in your waistband. So what I recommend for waistband casings like this is this elastic, the stiff elastic. So what I'm going to do is I have this super big bobby pin, uh, safety pin. This is not a bobby pin. This huge gargantuan safety pin. It's about two inches long and it's used for basting quilts together. So, you know, when you have a quilt, you have three layers and you pin them all together so that that way as you stitch the quilt together, you take the pins out. But, so, this is what this, we're going to do. We're going to slip that through like that. And this is going to be our guide. And we're going to insert this into our casing. Do you guys see that? I need to zoom in. Do I need to zoom in? Let me zoom in here. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to put the elastic in and we're going to push it, push the fabric over the safety pin. This is the safety pin right here. We're going to push the fabric over the safety pin and wiggle that elastic in. Oh, like that. So see, and now the elastic is in there. And we're going to do it all the way around, just like this. Now when we get to the end here, we're going to take this part and we're going to pin it. So I'm going to take another big old safety pin, put it through here, and then I'm going to pin it to that seam allowance right here. And what that does is as you gather the elastic through, it'll keep the elastic poking out so it doesn't fall inside and, and you're not being able to get it. Because see, your waist, your waist is way bigger than that size of elastic. So here you go, we're just going to keep on going. Okay, so then we're going to take that safety pin off of the, of the seam allowance and we're going to pull that safety pin's elastic right back out. See? It's a good thing we had that in. Because if we didn't have that pin there, that elastic would have shifted down into the rest of the casing. So we're just going to pull all that out. And we're going to line up our elastics. So this is how you can check to make sure your elastic's flat. You just lay them end to end. You feel down here. If you feel any twisting, you'll have to go back and either pull it all out and do it over again, or see if you can twist the elastic back into place. But see, it's all flat. You can tell by the way it feels. So now, we're going to sew the top and the bottom together. And we're almost done. Okay, so I've got the elastic all sewn together, and you're not going to be able to see this, but I'll show you in just a second. 
see now it's all sewn together and this is how I sewed it so when you you hold the elastic together and you do a, a square with an X so you start on one side and you go up and you go down and you make your box and you go back and you sew an X into it and that's the most secure stitch you can do for your elastic I mean there's a way to butt the edges of the elastic up together but this is just simpler there's a little thickness to it I mean you're, you're gonna get a thickness to it right there let's see can you see let's see if we can get you to see okay there you go so there's gonna be a thickness there in your casing and you're gonna feel a thump thump you're gonna feel a lump but um, that's the most secure because there's no way it's gonna come undone so now so now you adjust you're, you're pushing that fabric and you're stretching the elastic so you're pushing and stretching pushing and stretching until that casing pops in and you might have to do some finagling it might not will be willingly pop in on its own you might have to do it finagle it but you pull it in until you get to that and you straighten this part out right here so it's nice and flat and then you're going to go back and you're going to sew the seam from where you stopped to where you started. You're going to do it right across that line, trying to match. You're going to have to try to match it as evenly as you can. It's okay if, if it's not perfect, if it's completely disconnected from the other side, it's alright. No one's going to, no one's going to notice it when you're, when you're wearing it. Also, before you get ready to sew that, if you have a tag you want to put in here, I have these little tags that I made with um, iron-on transfer paper and grow grain ribbon. Let's see if you get the focus. There we go. I did that. So it's a, a little piece of grow grain ribbon and I made this little design here and put it on transfer paper. So when I sew it on, it's my little personal tag. So I'll sew it on and this part will stick out and that helps my kids know that that's the back. So then we'll slide that in on the inside and sew it across like this there you go just like that I'm gonna sew right across there and flip it out and we'll be all done and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all done okay and here we go it's all done the elastic has been added the pockets have been added the hem's been all hemmed up this is what it looks like. There's only one seam on the back. So then that's the back side right there. So there's your seam. And your elastic is all done up and sewn shut with a little tag in the back so that everybody knows where the back is. And there you go. There you have it. All done. All right. And there you go. The skirt's all done. I'm going to post some pictures on, on Facebook and on Instagram and I'll probably have a picture of the front of this video showing you what it looks like on my daughter. If you have any questions or any comments put them in the comment section below. If you liked it comment, share it, spread the word, share the video, let uh, make something and let me know how it turns out and if you have any questions about the processes remember you can stop the video, you can rewind, you can pause, you can do whatever you need to do to, in order to make your skirt. Questions? comments leave them below I'll answer the questions as best as I can and if I need to make more videos on showing you certain techniques I can do that too you guys let me know anyways I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you guys have an awesome summer vacation and I'll see you next year at school bye